Hello guys, and welcome to my channel. Due to YouTube copyright infringement, we only use one picture with voiceover. Thank you for understanding. If you love history and biographies, please leave a like and a sub. Let's start the video. Alfred Russell Wallace, born January 8, 1823, Usk, Monmouthshire, Wales, died November 7, 1913, Broadston, Dorset, England, British humanist, naturalist, geographer, and social critic. He became a public figure in England during the second half of the 19th century, known for his courageous views on scientific, social, and spiritualist subjects. His formulation of the theory of evolution by natural selection, which predated Charles Darwin's published contributions, is his outstanding legacy, but it was just one of many controversial issues he studied and wrote about during his lifetime. Wallace's wide-ranging interests, from socialism to spiritualism, from island biogeography to life on Mars, from evolution to land nationalization, stemmed from his profound concern with the moral, social, and political values of human life. The eighth of nine children born to Thomas Vere Wallace and Mary and Greenell, Alfred Russell Wallace grew up in modest circumstances in rural Wales and then in Hertford, Hertfordshire, England. His formal education was limited to six years at the one-room Hertford Grammar School. Although his education was curtailed by the family's worsening financial situation, his home was a rich source of books, maps, and gardening activities, which Wallace remembered as enduring sources of learning and pleasure. Wallace's parents belonged to the Church of England, and as a child Wallace attended services. His lack of enthusiasm for organized religion became more pronounced when he was exposed to secular teachings at a London Mechanics Institute, the Hall of Science off Tottenham Court Road. Living in London with his brother John, an apprentice carpenter, the 14-year-old Wallace became familiar with the lives of tradesmen and laborers, and he shared in their efforts at self-education. Here Wallace read treatises and attended lectures by Robert Owen and his son Robert Dale Owen that formed the basis of his religious skepticism and his reformist and socialist political philosophy. In 1837 Wallace became an apprentice in the surveying business of his eldest brother, William. New tax laws, Tithe Commutation Act, 1836, and the division of public land among landowners, General Enclosures Act, 1845, created a demand for accurate surveys and maps of farmlands, public lands, and parishes, as surveys and maps made according to regulations were legal documents in executing these laws. For approximately eight of the next ten years, Wallace surveyed and mapped in Bedfordshire and then in Wales. He lived among farmers and artisans and saw the injustices suffered by the poor as a result of the new laws. Wallace's detailed observations of their habits are recorded in one of his first writing efforts, an essay on the South Wales farmer, which is reproduced in his autobiography. When surveying work could not be found as a result of violent uprisings by the Welsh farmers, Wallace spent a year, 1844, teaching at a boys' school, the Collegiate School in Leicester, Leicestershire, England. After his brother William died in early 1845, Wallace worked in London and Wales, saw to his brother's business, surveyed for a proposed railway line, and built a mechanics institute at Neath, Wales, with his brother John. As a surveyor, Wallace spent a great deal of time outdoors, both for work and pleasure. An enthusiastic amateur naturalist with an intellectual bent, he read widely in natural history, history, and political economy, including works by William Swainson, Charles Darwin, Alexander von Humboldt, and Thomas Malthus. He also read works and attended lectures on phrenology and mesmerism, forming an interest in non-material mental phenomena that grew increasingly prominent later in his life. Inspired by reading about organic evolution in Robert Chambers's controversial Vestiges of the Natural History of Creation, 1844, Unemployed and ardent in his love of nature, Wallace and his naturalist friend Henry Walter Bates, who had introduced Wallace to entomology for years earlier, traveled to Brazil in 1848 as self-employed specimen collectors. 
Wallace and Bates participated in the culture of natural history collecting, honing practical skills to identify, collect, and send back to England biological objects that were highly valued in the flourishing trade in natural specimens. The two young men amicably parted ways after several joint collecting ventures, Bates spent 11 years in the region, while Wallace spent a total of four years traveling, collecting, mapping, drawing, and writing in unexplored regions of the Amazon River Basin. He studied the languages and habits of the peoples he encountered, he collected butterflies, other insects, and birds, and he searched for clues to solve the mystery of the origin of plant and animal species. Except for one shipment of specimens sent to his agent in London, however, most of Wallace's collections were lost on his voyage home when his ship went up in flames and sank. Nevertheless, he managed to save some of his notes before his rescue and return journey. From these he published several scientific articles, two books, Palm Trees of the Amazon and Their Uses, and Narrative of Travels on the Amazon and Rio Negro, both 1853, and a map depicting the course of the Negro River. These won him acclaim from the Royal Geographical Society, which helped to fund his next collecting venture, in the Malay Archipelago. Wallace spent eight years in the Malay Archipelago, from 1854 to 1862, traveling among the islands, collecting biological specimens for his own research and for sale, and writing scores of scientific articles on mostly zoological subjects. Among these were two extraordinary articles dealing with the origin of new species. The first of these, published in 1855, concluded with the assertion that every species has come into existence coincident both in space and time with a pre-existing closely allied species. Wallace then proposed that new species arise by the progression and continued divergence of varieties that outlive the parent species in the struggle for existence. In early 1858 he sent a paper outlining these ideas to Darwin who saw such a striking coincidence to his own theory that he consulted his closest colleagues, the geologist Charles Lyell and the botanist Joseph Dalton Hooker. The three men decided to present two extracts of Darwin's previous writings, along with Wallace's paper, to the Linnean Society. The resulting set of papers, with both Darwin's and Wallace's names, was published as a single article entitled, on the tendency of species to form varieties and on the perpetuation of varieties and species by natural means of selection in the proceedings of the Linnean Society in 1858. This compromise sought to avoid a conflict of priority interests and was reached without Wallace's knowledge. Wallace's research on the geographic distribution of animals among the islands of the Malay archipelago provided crucial evidence for his evolutionary theories and led him to devise what soon became known as the Wallace Line, the boundary that separates the fauna of Australia from that of Asia. Wallace returned to England in 1862 an established natural scientist and geographer, as well as a collector of more than 125,000 animal specimens. He married Annie Mitten, 1848-1914, with whom he raised three children, Herbert died at age four, whereas Violet and William survived their father, published a highly successful narrative of his journey, the Malay Archipelago, the land of the Orangutan, and the Bird of Paradise, 1869, and wrote contributions to the theory of natural selection, 1870. In the latter volume and in several articles from this period on human evolution and spiritualism, Wallace parted from the scientific naturalism of many of his friends and colleagues in claiming that natural selection could not account for the higher faculties of human beings. The Wallace family moved several times, from inner London to the outer borough of Barking, to Grays in Essex, and then south to Dorking, Surrey, to the outer borough of Croydon, to Godalming, Surrey, then to Parkston and finally Broadston, both in Dorset. Wallace built three of his family's houses, and at each he and his wife kept gardens. Although he applied for several jobs, Wallace never held a permanent position. He lost the profits from his collections through bad investments and other financial misfortunes. His income was limited to earnings from his writings, from grading school exams, 
which he did for some 25 years, and from a small inheritance from a relative. In 1881 he was added to the civil list, thanks largely to the efforts of Darwin and T. H. Huxley. Wallace received several awards, including the Royal Society of London's Royal Medal, 1868, Darwin Medal, 1890, for his independent origination of the origin of species by natural selection, Copley Medal, 1908, an Order of Merit, 1908, the Linnean Society of London's Gold Medal, 1892, and Darwin Wallace Medal, 1908, and the Royal Geographical Society's Founders Medal, 1892. He was also awarded honorary doctorates from the Universities of Dublin 1882 and Oxford 1889, and one election to the Royal Society 1893.